I see, I see 12.02 p.m. on my clock, and I would like to be respectful of everyone's time. I know we have a lot of good stuff going on today, and I would just want to make sure that we take as much time as possible just covering all, all the important details. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Angie Carriles. I am the HR Program Manager, and I will be your facilitator for today's webinar. Welcome to today's webinar. It is Doors Open When You Knock. Before I formally introduce today's subject matter expert, I would like to remind everyone that today's webinar is not for CE credit. Therefore, you do not need to be on camera or we won't be able to hear you. However, you are able to use the chat to ask any questions to our speaker today. Also, we will need a few volunteers throughout the program to do some fun activity with Steven. So make sure that you let us know that you would like to be on camera and be unmuted so we can put you as a panelist, put you on camera and do that activity with Steven. And the people that volunteer to do that, we will give you one of Steven's most famous book, which is Doors Open When You Knock. So just make sure that you keep that hand raised. I will put you as a panelist and then we'll have your own camera, okay? Now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Stephen Ross. Originally from Southern California, Stephen began selling real estate there in 2005 and for the last 15 plus years in Colorado. Steven said he is the worst type of person to be a real estate agent because he's an introvert. He doesn't work nights or weekends. You can't find him online. He doesn't do parties or events. In fact, he might even be a little antisocial. Yet he built a successful real estate business twice doing one thing and one thing only, knocking on doors over 125,000 of them. Stephen Ross is the author of the book, Door Opens When You Knock, a realtor's handbook for boneless opportunity and freedom. He coaches and trains agents to work less, earn more, and not feel guilty about it. Stephen, it is my absolute pleasure to have you here with us today. As a reminder, today's webinar is being recorded and we will share with you that recording right after the webinar it's over so now with no further ado steven i just pass the virtual floor to you awesome thank you so much good afternoon houston board of realtors and i am a fellow realtor and uh thank you mary angie for that awesome introduction let me go ahead and share my screen awesome so doors open when you knock all right, this isn't really a class on door knocking, and I'm gonna ask some questions though about what you came for. But first, like I said, it's not really a class on door knocking per se, but I am curious in the chat, so we're gonna start right off the bat. In the chat, who has knocked on doors before? But thanks, Tiffany, by the way, I love your having to have a resume. Uh, for to make the mac and cheese. Awesome. All right. So Dina, Christina, Layla, Layla, not you. Okay. Perla. All right, great. So those of you that have knocked on doors noted that it's a warm, fuzzy, inviting experience knocking on doors, right? No? How many people, and this, this is the hard part, I can't do this like virtually, this doesn't quite work as well, but you got to get, if you're someone who doesn't, who would never open their door for a door knocker, I'm talking to you. Because if I knocked on your door today and you opened the door by some, the spirit moved you. And then I said, you know, and it was a good conversation. I wasn't super weird or kind of crazy. It was kind of like a really good conversation. You're like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. And then I said, hey, let's take a selfie. What would you guys say? Put it in the chat. Who would take a selfie with me? Nope. Thank you, Penny. Yeah. No, no way. Crazy dude. Stranger danger. But look. Look at all these people that's taken selfies with me over the years. Now, why in the world would people take a selfie with me at the door? And so I'm, I'm looking for an answer in, in the chat and every answer is great. Here's the question. What is present, right? So if I'm having a conversation, if I'm at your door, I'm having a conversation. And at the end of the conversation, 
and I say, hey, would you mind taking a picture with me? What's there? It's not because I asked. What's there? Oh, look, you guys are already answering. Because they trust you, Dina. Awesome. Dina should get a book, Mary Angie. So I've gifted 10 books to Mary Angie, and she's going to decide who they go to. But for sure, um, I appreciate everyone uh, chiming in here. I'm not bribing them with something. That's funny, Tiffany. But it's trust. But lots of other things. People feel safe. People feel connected. People feel whatever. There's lots of things that people could feel. But in the end, they feel trust. And this is a trust-based business. And when you build a business based on trust, your life gets simpler. Your business and your business and life gets easier. You earn more money per hour. And you only have to work the hours that you want to work. You know, that's the beauty. And so if I can do it at the doors, because everything Mary Angie said about me is totally true. I'm the worst person to be a real estate agent. Totally. I am introverted. I'm probably, and I really probably am antisocial. Like I, I would just prefer to be home doing nothing. But when you build a business based on trust, you know, these things are possible. That's what we're going to talk about today. But first, before I talk about what we're going to, before we jump into what we're going to talk about today, I'll just tell you a quick backstory. So March 15th, 2005, I got my real estate license back in Southern California. I now live in Colorado. But back then, I got my real estate license, and six weeks later, my third child was born. So that's my family. So here I am. I'm all of those things Mary Angie said. I'm in a commission-only business, and I've got these three kids to feed. And they don't, as you know, if you have kids, they don't feed themselves. So I'm like, all right, well, let me figure this out. About two months into the business, so about the time this picture is taken, I'm in business two months, I'm in a two-week training. I was with Cobo Banker in Woodland Hills, California. And back then, Cobo Banker had this two-week training called Fast Start. All this is sort of irrelevant, but sort of paints the picture. So the second week, they bring in this real estate coach. And I don't remember much about that day, except one, he yelled at us, and two, he said something that altered the trajectory of my life and business. He said, real estate is a very simple business. Knock on heads, knock on doors, pick one. By the way, if you're wondering what knock on heads means, that means just talking to people wherever you are. So if you're naturally social, that's pretty easy. I'm not naturally social, so that's not so easy. But it's talking to people in some sort of anywhere you are about real estate and then there's the act of door knocking or cold calling, anything where you're actually having deliberate real estate conversations. Anyways, so he says, knock on heads, knock on doors, pick one. I'm like, dude, come on, man. I'm a real estate grad. I've worked on Wall Street. I've done startups. I am not knocking on doors. That's for vacuum sales, cleaning people, vacuum cleaner, whatever. Vacuum cleaner people and bug term extermination and everything else that gets sold door to door. Not for me. But I had those three kids to feed. And you know, here I am two, now three months into business and I'm not doing so well. And I'm, not, I'm unwilling to fail out of this business. So I'm like, well, I guess I better try this door knocking stuff. And look, I was terrible, like really, really, really bad for actually a pretty long time. But the one thing is, is I did not quit. And over 16 years, I knocked on doors. And 125,000 doors doesn't happen overnight. And it's a long way. That's like if I walked from LA to New York, I'd almost be back in LA. That's how far it is. So everything I'm sharing with you is not is like actual experience. I didn't watch some some dude's YouTube video and then I'm regurgitating. Like this is 16 years of going out and talking to people about real estate and selling real estate in two different states. So I was originally licensed in California and then that wasn't hard enough. Let me try and start over all over again in the middle of the financial crisis. So uh, a little bit about to me, about me, but today is for you. So I just want to get a sense of who's here. Um, and so if you're newer, right, these are, this is the beginning. This is, you know, you can learn some of these principles and put them into place. Who's been in business less than two years in the chat? Awesome. Thanks to Portia and Nora. Great. Marissa. Now it goes too fast. I can't read. Marcella. Mrs. Lauren Donald, great, Gisela, awesome. All right, now who's been here a little while, like two to 15 years? I know that's a big range, right? Derek, you qualify, Humberto, Penny, awesome. Susanna, Brittany, great. Sam, seven years next month, congratulations. All right, 
Now, who's been here a lot of while? I know that makes no sense, but it's kind of funny. Who's been here like more than 15 years? Anyone been around? Like I'm here, this is my 19th year. Awesome. Thanks, Tiffany, Dina. Great. Linda, Carlos. Awesome. Okay. So no matter which category you're in, there is something for you because these principles are universal. And maybe you're at a point in your business where you're like, if you're new, you just want, you know, hey, I want to focus on the basics because I know that's going to make me successful. If you're in the middle of your career, maybe you've gotten spoiled a little. Don't take that the wrong way. I invite you not to take that the wrong way. You know, the last few years have been a little easier. If you've been around, some of you who have been around a lot of while, you know, you, like me, also remembers when business was a little more, uh, not harder, but it took a little more discipline. And so we've got something for you as well today. So if we were in person, I'd hand you this card that looked like this. And this, these are my feedback cards. So we're going to have to do this on chat. So I know why I'm here today, but what do you, you came here, you took time, you're taking an hour and a half out of your day here in November. What, what did you want? You know, you signed up and now you're here. What do you want to get out of today? And if you don't tell me, it's hard for me to give it to you. New ideas. Susanna, awesome. Be specific. Like what? What would a new idea and what? Best way to put yourself out there. How to create a new lead. Great. Scripts, gaining leads. Stronger door knocking. Awesome. Wisdom on how to create your own lane. Awesome. Learn how to door knock with confidence. New leads and work outside your sphere of influence. Okay, great. Getting out of the comfort zone. What questions to ask? All right, awesome. These are great. Perfect. Need info to be sharp. Perfect. All right, great. Awesome. Well, most of that I can give you. Lead gen is going to be tricky. I'm going to blow your mind when it comes to lead gen. You're going to like want to hang up, but you're not going to want to hang up. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. All right, here's my intention for today. My intention is to give you an access into true, what I consider true real estate success and personal freedom. That is my 19th, I'm in the middle of my 19th year. I've worked in two different states. I've coached and trained with and, and for some of the best agents around. And I've seen what works and what doesn't work. So obviously this is my view. Um, but the book is, it's called Doors Open When You Knock. But really, the subtitle is really what it's about. It's a realtor's handbook for boundless opportunity and freedom. Today really is about leaving you with a new view, a new pathway to being and working in your business. And like I said, I'm, I gifted Mary Angie 10 books. She's going to give them to the people who volunteer the best, most, or just because she likes you, I guess. I don't know. It's totally up to her. And if this, if this is interesting, you can also buy them on Amazon or wherever else you buy books. I'm not here to sell you a book. I'm just letting you know if you want more of what we got out of today, it's there. All right. So like I said, my, that's what my intention is for today. But really, it's about setting a new context. And you might be thinking, what do you mean by setting a new context? Setting a context is like a new view. So if I put on my daughter's sunglasses here, I'm in the same exact spot, but everything looks and feels different. First off, um, you can't see this, but they're like multi-tinted. So like when I move my head, like the colors, like it freaks my head out. But I'm in the same place, but I have a whole new view of being here with you. And when I say sending a new context, I'm giving you, a, you're already in your business, but really by the time we end today, you're going to have a new view of how to operate in your business and nothing will have changed, but you will see things hopefully that you didn't see before, or you see in a different way that gives you access to more power and freedom. And an example is like, if I gave you, this is the script, you're welcome to take a picture of it. This will do you no good. This is the script I used at the door and has made me millions of dollars. But without the context behind it on how to use it, who you have to be and how you approach it, it's totally worthless. Maybe not totally worthless, but it's pretty worthless. So setting a context today is giving you some power behind how to operate in your business because by default, the business, my view, has a, has a very, <laughs> what I call hard and unfulfilling way to be in real estate. And so there's three ways, three substandards that I call them the grip of the industry, 
that really keep us from having any true power and freedom in this business. And the first is that our identity is based on our production, that who we are is our sales volume. If you sell a lot of homes, you're amazing. If you don't sell a lot of homes, not so much. And it's not what other people say about us. It's what we say about ourselves. And you know what I'm talking about. And there's nothing wrong with selling lots of homes. If you're number one in your office, awesome. That's not my point here. But the industry, as you know, makes this whole thing about ranking and who's, you know, who's number one and blah, 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 blah. And I've been on this and I'm that. And who cares, really? And it gets out of control. I saw this post. I thought this was hilarious. Top producers in the month of October. From 10-1 to 10-4-23, Fernando is ranked number five. I mean, are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. First off, who cares? And secondly, it's totally unimportant. And then, of course, just the thing that makes me laugh, totally unrelated to my point, but just the nonsense of our industry. Disclosure, if you see that you're not even spelled right, you're not or in the numbers are off, please let Mr. Excellence, that's the guy who writes this post, Mr. Excellence makes mistakes and sometimes forgets. Aha, uh -huh. great way to be excellent. Anyways, so there's so the industry is this thing that who we are is our production. And so for years and years and years, here I am at the doors. I mean, look, everybody look, look at this picture. What a knucklehead. Seriously, total clown, yellow shirt, goofy hat, kind of stinky because it's usually hot and sweaty half the time. And even in the winter, it's still kind of, you're still kind of hot and sweaty, right? And it's humbling to be knocking on people's door because just like all of you said, I would never open the door. You know, I know what's on the other side of the door. It takes something to go out. And so I'm out, you know, huffing it, working. And then, you know, if I look around, what is the industry? You know, this guy's posting him in his Lambo and he's killing it, you know, with these three marketing techniques or whatever. Right, everybody knows what I'm talking about. And that is the image of success in real estate. And it's total nonsense. It's total nonsense. And you know that because you can look at the picture and laugh at the guy in the Lambo. So what I'm saying, it's not about how much business you do. It's about how you do your business. And the question to ask yourself is, are you profoundly satisfied with your life and business? Profoundly satisfied. And I suspect it's not based on how much business you do. It's about how many hours are you working or what are you earning what you're capable of or combining your time and money to have a high quality of life. We're going to talk more about this. But the first thing is, right, the, the industry says our identity, who we are is our production. I'm saying, nope. So the second thing is something's better than nothing. I'm also going to say, survey says, eh, right? Totally not true, both in terms of who you work with and the fee you charge. There's no amount of money in the world that would get me to work with a jerk. I don't care how big a house or what the commission is, I'm not doing it. And I'll talk about that. And this last one, if you, especially if you're new, you fall into this trap, I just got to be available 24 seven. And that's a surefire way to burn out. And this meme is funny because it's true. Right, I remember days off before I became a realtor, you know, it's total ridiculousness. So in the chat, who takes a whole day off every week? And don't say me, tell me what day. So if you take a day off, what day do you take off? Sunday, great. Monday, Sunday, awesome. Sunday, now here's the real question. Monday, Saturday or Sunday, it's tricky having one or the other, because then sometimes you end up working both, sick day, okay, usually Saturday, to usually suspect. See, is it Daruk? At least you're being off, honest. You still answer the phone calls. That's not being off. I mean, who takes a day off and you shut your phone off? I would bet. Awesome, thanks, Bertha. Yeah, most people, most, when I ask this question, most everyone's like, oh, yeah, I take the day off, but not really. Take the day off, but not really. And my phone is off on Sundays. You cannot get a hold of me. And I still have plenty of business. So what I'm saying, these <laughs> low standards is a surefire way to get to the bottom, to be miserable.
on some level. And I don't mean totally miserable, but to not be profoundly satisfied. Because in general, the business wants us to hustle and work harder, blah, 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 blah. And that's exhausting. And if you don't believe what I'm talking about, here's, here's the example that we're going to dig into today. All right, wait for this. So if you're gonna, everyone has a database. Pretend you have a database and you have 200 people in it. I don't mean 200 leads. I mean 200 people, um, Zyra, is it Zara or Bertha or Adrian or Penny or Marissa that know you, Marcella, that know you, Tiffany, as a realtor. They know you as a realtor. They like you as a realtor. And the odds are pretty high that when they have a real estate need, they're calling you. That's what I mean by 200 people in it. So if you have a database with a thousand people in it, I suspect they all aren't what I just described. Does everyone get that? Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Sarah. So that what I'm saying is that database, those people that already know, like, and trust you, that database can reliably produce 20 transactions per year. And if you have any doubt about that, that's probably too low because if just five people move and they bought and sold, that's 10. So you're already halfway there. If you have an average sales price, I don't know if that's a, a correct, I don't know that what everyone's average sales price, but I picked what I thought was a fairly reasonable number. You can adjust for your own business. 350 and an average fee of more because probably whatever you're charging is not enough. And because uh, most people, under, you know, despite what all the news say, most people undercharge. So I'm going to say you have an average, to make the math simple, I'm going to say you have an average commission of 10.5, which is an annual GCI of $210,000. You get to take Saturday or Sunday or Monday or whatever day you put off, off, and you can work 30 hours a week or less. Now in the chat, who wants that business? Thank you. All right, some of you. All right, well, then we're in the right place because that's what we're talking about. That simple, seriously, no kidding. No magic tricks. And here's the way to do it. First is, so we're gonna go through three pathways here. First is setting your own standards. So it can't be about your production. It's gotta be about something else. Dollar per hour to me, by the way, this is in the book. I go through this chart, but basically what it's saying is how many hours on average are you working per week? For me, last year, I didn't, I didn't, um, I, well, actually now I typically don't work on average more than 10 to 12 hours a week. And I don't work more than 40 to 45, 40 to 45 weeks. And even when I was full time, like not doing this, I still never worked more than 30. And generally it was closer to 25. And when you have a, when you focus on your time, then you have a very different experience of being in real estate. Here's my example. It starts with who are you as a professional? Who are you? I'm going to give you an example. So here's other professions, other professionals, starting with management consultants. They seem to make the most amount of money. You know, I won't explain who McKinsey and Co. are, but basically, if you're a Fortune 50 company and you have a big problem, you, the first person you typically call is McKinsey and Co. And you pay those guys upwards of $1,500 an hour. And then it goes down. Your partners at niche law firms and other professional services firms. And even in medicine, surgeons make more money right, than a general practitioner. And then when you get below that, you get people who make less than $100 an hour. You get into sales reps, medical sales, and then the, and then you get into tech sales, auto sales, retail sales, so all the way down to 12 bucks an hour. So, all right, in the chat, what's the difference between the people at the top and the people at the bottom? What's the difference between the people making $1,000 an hour or more and the people who are working for 20 bucks an hour or less? What's the difference? There's no wrong answer. There's lots of answers. Hours work, skills, specialized skill, knowledge. Yep. Great education systems. They can charge, oh, excellent. They can charge what they're worth. How they value themselves. These are awesome. Education expertise. Let me pick on the education for a minute. Anyone know? All right. 
Awesome advice, advice given. Great. Is that Vivian? Yeah. You know how long it takes to become a neurosurgeon? Anyone know? Years, right. It's 17 years. That was a good guess, Susanna. 18. Seven. You guys, that was some good guesses. 17. Four years of college, four years of med school, nine years residency before they let you on your own to go operate on a brain. What about realtors? Take a test and out you go, right? In weeks, months, tops. So the difference, all of those, everything you guys said is totally true. The difference is that the people at the bottom are transactional and the people at the top are consultative. Another way to say it is the people at the top are solving bigger problems and people are willing to pay for them. So for you as a realtor, are you selling houses or are you solving problems for people? Because anyone can sell houses, anyone. That's the whole point of all this other nonsense in the news. Anyone can sell houses. We know that's not true. But if you are solving problems for people, people are happy, happy to pay you your fee. Happy to pay you your fee when you're solving problems. And many realtors make less than $50 an hour. So here's another way to look at it. This was by McKissick Learning. And the their experience was that realtors who made more, it wasn't that they earned more per hour. They just worked more. And that's not what we're talking about here. Now, this exercise is going to be a little tricky because if you're on your phone, you won't be able to do this exercise. But if you're on a computer, I left it in because I'm hoping some of you, I don't want to cheat those of you that are sitting at a computer or have an, a separate device where you can do this. And if you are on a separate device um, and you want to scan the QR code, it's going to take you to this little uh uh, form and it's going to calculate your dollar per hour. And by the way, you're the only one that's going to see this. No one else is going to know what your number is. But here's the trick. When you calculate your number, you got to be honest. First is what's your net commission? So what's on your 1099? You do it for last year or this year. You know, after your broker split and after if you paid for leads or you paid referral fees, those come off the top. Those don't count in your in your commission income. And then you got to figure out how many hours you're working. And this is the thing. No one keeps track. None of you are keeping track. I mean, even I don't really keep track of my hours. Ish. Right? No one's keeping track. So no one really knows. So here's the time that most people don't even know that they're working and they are. Number one, if you're answering email at 11 p.m. or 6 a.m. And you check a message and now you're upset by what you heard, you're working. You weren't working for five minutes. You're working for the one, two, three hours that you're now upset. If you're on social media, I'm sure some of you are on social media and you might say, oh, I go on. I just kind of just see what's happening. I just do it for entertainment. No, you don't. If you're being honest, you see stuff for real estate and then you're looking at real estate stuff and now you're in your own head about what you should be doing and this and that. And now you're worrying about your business. My wife is a physician. When she gets on social media, she gets on Instagram, she's looking at dog videos. That's recreation for her. That is not working. But for most of you, when you're on social media, you're working. Have to count that. And then just generally, anytime you're worrying, that counts as work too. So most of you, I would suspect, are working at least 30 hours a week or more if you count all the other stuff. And if you and then um You'd have, to, you'd have to calculate how many hours, sorry, how many weeks you worked. So I know I'm going to lose a few of you here. For most of you, you just put in 45. You take a few weeks off. So if you're doing this, this exercise because you have a separate device, you can put in the year you started. Not that, that it doesn't calculate anything. It just differentiates on the program. Put in the year you started, put in the number of, put in what your net income was, put in the number of hours a week you worked and the number of weeks you worked, and it'll give you your dollar per hour. Did anyone calculate it? I'm curious. Who'd be brave enough to share in the chat that they calculate? Don't tell me your number, just that you did it. Awesome, great. Was anyone... Well, did anyone get a number that like blew them away upwards? Awesome. Great. Okay. 
generally what I find when I do this exercise, most people get a number that they're not thrilled with. They get a number, basically, that's what I said, that's less than $50 an hour. And if you're going to make $50 an hour and have all the stress, worry, no vacation, no sick pay, no benefits, none of that, you might as well get a J-O-B. When I was doing this in Seattle a few months ago, on the way to the event, there was an ad for a corrections officer for $31, $33 an hour. When I did this exercise in the event, right, this kid yeah, kid, he was in his 20s, you know, saw the chart from before and say, like, oh, I'd make more money at Best Buy. And that's no way to be in this business. So I really thank you, Derek, for being for being honest. And so the place to start is you got to be truthful with where you're at. Telling yourself some story that's not true is not going to help you. And so this is about raising your standards. And I love, I'm going to read this quote from Tony Robbins because it's powerful. Anytime you sincerely want to make a change, the first thing you must do is raise your standards. What really changed my life is the change I demanded of myself. I wrote down all the things I would no longer accept in my life, all the things I would no longer tolerate, and all the things I aspire to becoming. So it's a function of if you don't like your number, great. I mean, and even if you do like your number, like last year, I made $500, almost $500 an hour as in real estate. I believe I'm worth a thousand. So for me, I got room to go, right? So whatever number you're at doesn't mean, all right, I mean, and it could be totally fine. Whatever your number was and you're great with it, totally fine. But even me, I'm like, I know I'm worth more. I know what I provide for my clients is worth $1,000 an hour. So standards. I said this is all about just setting the standards. And it starts with who you work with and how. My mentor, Fred Wilson, when I first got in the business, it was really easy. He said, I work, do they need help, want help, willing to let me help them, and ready to go now? And if you don't meet all four, he wasn't working with you. And I quickly adopted that because... If they don't, if people don't meet all four, I'm, it's not worth my time. My time is to me worth a thousand dollars an hour. And you have to decide what your time's worth. Only you can decide. So if all four of those things aren't true, I'm not working with them. But that's, that's only one piece of the puzzle. Here's another way to look at it because I won't work with everyone. So this comes from Joe Polish and he splits people into two categories, haves and else. Haves, hard, annoying, lame, frustrating, a.k.a. jerks. I don't work with them. I work with elves. Elves are easy, lucrative, and fun. So if you don't know what jerks look like, they look like this. Elves, elves smile. They're awesome. So you all, some of you I know are a little newer, like brand new, but many of you have been around a while. Share, those of you that have been around, what is it like when you work with jerks or haves? It's probably not nice to say jerks, but it just it puts the brings the point home. What's the experience? It's unproductive. It's frustrating. For me, it makes me want to quit the business when I have a jerk. And that's why I just absolutely refuse to do it anymore. It's tedious. Tedious is it. That's an excellent point, Adrian. Like surgery with no anesthesia. I'll tell it to my wife. She's an anesthesiologist. Yeah, it's, yeah, Carlos, excellent. It's time consuming. Those people, not only do they suck the life out of you, they take more time. And you, if the only thing annoying, taxing, yeah, all of those things. If you want to make more money per hour and have more quality time off, you can't work with jerks because they don't respect your time. They don't care about you having time off. They want to bother you on your time off. So it really is deciding you're gonna set a standard on who you're gonna work with and how. So this is who you're gonna work with. Becoming a trusted advisor is how you work with them. You go from being a commodity to a valued resource. Look, there's 40, 50 of you on the on the line here. Mary, Mary Angie, how many realtors are they, excuse me, in the in the board? or anyone can answer, how many realtors are there in the board, in the Houston board? How many members? We are at 50,000 members. 50,000. 
Oh, that's amazing. And that's 50,000. How in the world are you going to stand out? Right? It's easy for the public to think you're all, we're all the same. Right? We, in reality, is we all do the same things. That's not really it. So here's, here's one view of how to differentiate yourself, how to be, and it's not about differentiating yourself like my marketing's better or I do this or I'm great at service. So I'm going to give you another view. So if you look at a real estate transaction, at the very basic, basic level of the pyramid is you have the needs of the transaction, which is essentially paperwork. Above that, you have service. Some agents and, and some teams are excellent at service. I'm fair at best at service. I do what needs to get done, but I'm not really service oriented. Above service, because I'm really good at the next two. The next two are relationship and being a trusted advisor. Before I get to those two, you don't need relationship and trusted advisor. Many of you, if you look, and some of you, like I, you know, you've already said, you've been around a while. I know it's not just me. I've had plenty of transactions. I met someone in an open house. They were referred to me. I met them at the door. I had plenty of transactions where we met. We had no prior relationship. I never really got to know them. I was never really connected. I wasn't really sure if they ever really trusted me or believed me. Deal got done. Never talked to them again for whatever reason. We've all had those. That's not where your business is. It happens, but that's that should be 20% or less of your business. Your real business is when you develop a relationship and become someone's trusted advisor. And you do that as a function of your business experience and your ability to, to create deep and trusting relationships. So it's, it's your real estate IQ. Do you know the market? Do you know the contract? Do you know anything about homes? Do you know the buying process, the listing process? Do you know how to negotiate? Some of that's just time, right? So if you're new, it's going to take you some time. You know, a little plug for the doors. The doors will make you smarter faster. There's nothing else you can do to learn the market and get better at talking to people than going to the doors. And period, nothing, nothing. So I'm not saying you need to go to the doors, but if you're newer and you want to ramp up your real estate IQ, that is the fastest way. There's no shortcuts. And your EQ, your emotional intelligence, is based on how you interact with your clients. Do you really, really put their interests first or do you have commission breath? And you know, if you're holding an open house or you've walked into other people's open houses, you can tell when an agent has commission breath. And so do the, uh, and so do the clients. And they know whether they feel safe and that they can trust you. So your ability to do that is what allows you to work with great people who are happy to pay you your fee. Here's what trusted advisors don't do. The first thing is they have a fee and they stick to it. I think someone said when I was showing up the other professionals, someone in the chat put, um, they don't discount their fee. They're right. I can promise you if you go to your, if you have to have surgery, God forbid, you know, and you, you are not asking your surgeon for a discount. And if you do, they're almost certainly going to say no. So I'm not going to talk a lot about it other than it's black or white. There's no sort of. You either do or you don't. And the next thing is, and this is where I need, I'm going to need a volunteer. But before, so if you if you are willing to play with me for just a minute on a role play, raise your hand so Mary Angie can um, put you up as a panelist. But while one of or two of you are doing that, Someone else in the chat, what do you think I mean by free consulting? I see your question, Zara, on the on the you don't get a you don't get a multi discount from your surgeon. I'll just say that. I'm not saying you shouldn't discount your fee, but <clears throat> Provide solutions to their questions. Give them all the info without locking them down. Yeah, I mean, that's a good, I mean, that's a great point. Giving them information without a commitment to work with you. It's not about locking them down. 
It's about, are they committed to working with you or not? Consider. Who, yeah, represent, you know, not getting a buyer representation or seller. All right. Did anyone raise their hand, Mary Angie, to be a uh, role play with me for a minute? Yes. You ready? Yeah. All right, Diane. Awesome. Thanks for volunteering. So don't worry. I'm going to do all the heavy lifting. So let me give you a great example. So everyone, we're going to do a great example of free consulting. And it typically looks like this. So Diane, you're going to be a homeowner. Okay. And you're going to call me. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll do the first part. And then I'll tell you when we're going to role play. So Diane calls me. And she knows me because I've knocked on her door. And we've met a few times, but I don't know her super well. So she calls me. And she says, hey, Stephen, I've had enough of humidity in Houston and I'm out of here. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, Los Angeles, whatever. She won the lottery and she can afford a beach house in Malibu. She's going to Malibu. And she says, so she says, I'm going to Malibu. I'm interviewing agents. I would like you to come over and tell me what you can do for me and how you're going to get my home sold and what my house is worth. That's what she says. Now, everyone, you are all going to Diane's house, right? On that call, you're all going. Let's be honest. I am not going. I am not going. I am listening for the call that says, hey, Stephen, I've had enough of Houston. I'm going to Southern California. And I would like you to come over and help me figure out what I need to do to get to California. It's very different, subtle, super subtle, very different. And I am not telling all of you, I am not saying don't go on those appointments. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the odds are not even. The odds are stacked either for you or against you. So Diane, every time I do this, people are like, yeah, but what do you say? Well, here's an example of what you would say. So Diane, you got to be, pretend you're a homeowner and pretend very good, Martina, that keyword is you. But in the example where they're interviewing agents, so you you call me, we'll stick with the interviewing agents. So now here's where we're going to role play. Are you ready? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So uh, you, it's a great, well, hey, Diane, thanks for calling. Um, do, you, do you mind sharing who you're going to be interviewing? Oh, I have a bunch of people that are coming over. Uh, a bunch? Uh -huh. Well, several, I, you know, a couple of people from my church and I have a couple of people in my neighborhood. The woman that sold my house to me initially, all those people, I, I feel like I need to pick the best one. Who's going to do the best job for me. Holy smokes. Have you got the work cut out for you? <laughs> well, I figured they're going to do the work for me, but how are you going to decide? Like, how are you going to decide who is going to work with who you're going to work with? You know, I don't know, maybe whoever gives me the lowest commission that they're going to charge or I, I, I'm going to look at their marketing plan or, you know, I don't know. I, I'm going to interview them and see which one kind of um, resonates with me most. What resonates with you most? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And... You know, if you had, you know, had to pick today, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the plane's leaving tomorrow and you have to just pick an agent and go with them. Since you know all these people, you know, who do you think you'd pick? <laughs> I may have done this all wrong for you. I don't know. No, that's all right. You're doing um, great. Maybe the woman who sold my house to me initially. Yeah. Because she did a pretty good job the first time. Yeah. 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 And she knows you and she knows the house and right. And she's demonstrated that she knows what she's doing. Right. Okay. A couple of things. I'm going to say they're doing great, Diane. Thank you. <laughs> but a couple of things. One, if Diane had said, I'd prefer not to share. Okay. That's another red flag for me because now she's interviewing agents and she doesn't want to be transparent with who she's meeting with. How can I help someone that's not willing to be collaborative and forthcoming with me. I can't, I can't help that person. 
but she didn't do that. She's a little vague. Part of it is because we're making this up. But then she, <laughs> but then she came in with some specific, sp- specific examples, and now we're honing in. And so what I'm trying to get is like she has someone in mind. She knows. She gave me all this hubba hubba blue, right? About well, I know all these people, and I'm looking for the lowest fee, and blah blah blah. But push comes to shove, she's already thinking I'm probably going to go with the person who sold me the house, but I feel obligated. So then I would say, jumping back in, Diane, I'd say, so, you know, the people at church, how well you probably know them pretty well. Yeah, I'm not that well. Okay. Who do you know? It sounds like of the people you mentioned, you know, one or two socially pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the woman in my Sunday school class. Okay. And so how would it feel if you don't choose her to that relationship? I just probably, uh, well, I guess she would know. I was going to say I would not tell her, but I would tell her because if I'm interviewing her, (laughs) um, it wouldn't feel good at all. Yeah. Is it possible you might go with her just because you feel sort of obligated to Mm -hmm. her? Yeah. Yeah. Now, everyone, you're doing great, Diane. This is perfect. The point here is not who is she going with. The point is there's, I hope everyone can see, and Diane, you can maybe speak for the group. You can see that there's a lot happening. Just, I haven't even begun to talk about myself. It's, I'm irrelevant. You already have a lot of things happening, a lot of dynamics that are going to affect your decision-making in terms of who are you going to pick as an agent? And most of them have to do with you have some prior relationships. Did you see that, Diane? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And, you know, normally when we go into these appointments, we're like, all right, I'm going to knock them dead. I'm going to get all my stuff and I'm going to wow them. And it's a total waste of time. It doesn't mean your odds are zero because you will win some of them. But the odds are low because in this case, Diane's got some relationships with people that at the, at least at this surface level are going to be a little hard for me to overcome. So what I'm going to say is, you know, it's a great question, Daruk. Is it is it Dur- Dilruk? I'm saying that right, Dilruk. Um, what I'm going to say is, Diane, it sounds great. A um, couple of things. Um, the first is, uh, well, actually, let me do it this way first. If you don't mind um meet with everyone on your list and if you don't hear what you needed to hear would you be opposed to giving me a call i like that because i'm not going to go in and compete right i'm not doing that and the odds are she's not going to call me and i'm totally fine with that because now i've just saved two hours of prep half hour of driving there two hours or an hour and a half on the appointment and then three days worrying about, am I going to get the listing or not? That's a lot of time. You can't make a lot of money per hour when you're spending all that time with people where the odds are low that they're going to work with you. And she mentioned fee, but let's just say she was only meeting with two other people. So we're going to shorten the scenario and let's say it's not as clear, you know, that she likes the agent who sold her the house. I don't need to convince her. There's no convincing. If you want to earn a full fee, you are not going to do it convincing. And by the way, this is totally, I forgot to preface, all of this is totally against everything you've ever heard. Totally <laughs> against, right, how you've been trained as a real estate agent for most of you. Not all of you, but most of you. And and I'll show you where this is all rooted from in a second. But Diane, let's go back to the example of, it's um, it's just like, There's three of us. So the woman that sold you the house, a friend from Sunday school and me. Okay. I say, so great. Well, tell you what, why don't you meet with them? And then uh, I'll get you a second in a second to root. Why don't you meet with them? And then, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll meet with you last. Is is that, would that be a problem? Uh, No, that's fine. Okay. And just so you know, the way it works, the way I work is when I come over, it's a meet and greet. So we're not, I'm not doing any marketing. I don't, I don't bring my marketing plan and I don't bring pricing. So 
you know, it's just, can I help you? And, and do you feel comfortable with me representing you? And if that, if it's a fit, then hundred percent, I'll come back and we'll go over all that information. Okay. Okay. So Del Roof's question is, I'm confused. Where are we heading? <laughs> Where we're heading is no free consulting. This is super advanced stuff. Some of you are newer. I can't remember, Del Roof, how long you've been in business. So let's say there's a little bit of everything. Very good, Martina. It's about not wasting your time. If you're going to go to the doors and talk to people, you have to get better. It's not better at convincing. You have to get better at listening to what's happening in the situation you're at. If you want to make $1,000 an hour or more in real estate, you have to learn to listen. You have to learn to engage with people in a way that makes them feel safe. So in this interaction, Diane, did it feel like I was being rude or obnoxious or flippant? Not at all. Not at all. Mm -mm. I'm a professional. I'm trying to save you time as well. No need to meet with me if you're, if you're really just going to use the other people. So this is what it looks like to be a trusted advisor. The whole conversation is nothing about me. It's about the person I'm talking to and what's happening in their world. So that's the point. This is, and again, I've got an hour and a half. It's a webinar. Like it's really hard for me to create this. And you're, and thank you, Diane. You did an excellent job. Everyone give Diane a <laughs> round of applause uh, virtually. And you're, you're welcome to keep her there, Mary Angie, or, or um, we're going to do what we may do one other thing later, but we can, we can try someone else. Okay. <clears throat> but the point is, this is how you be a trusted advisor. This is what it looks like. So it's a glimpse into what I have up on the screen. And lastly, trusted advisors don't give away money in the middle of a transaction. They're not chipping in to put a deal together. They're not chipping in to make the, you know, to fix the furnace. So I'm not going to dwell on that. But consider that when you do any of when you're doing any of these things, then you're really not a trusted advisor in that client relationship. So what's the point? We talked about setting high standards. Who you work with, this is how you work with them. I'm giving you 10 minutes into what could take 10 weeks to teach you. You're just getting a little blip. If you want to dig into it more, here's where you get that. This came from <clears throat> originally Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. That's Chris on the left. Steve Schulz, my mentor on the right. We went to Chris about seven years ago and we basically pulled out of Chris the material that's in the full fee agent. So that book is by Chris Voss and Steve Schult. And, uh, you know, my quote is, you know, paying my full fee is the litmus test for having a great client. So if you want to be a full fee agent, if you want to be a trusted advisor, if you want to be someone who earns $1,000 an hour, you have to charge your full fee, whatever your full fee is. That's the point of this section. So, we talked about, well, actually, there's one more thing. So if you're wondering, oh, but, you know, this won't work in my market. This works in all markets at all price levels. So if you're familiar with Mauricio Umansky, who's the founder of the agency, this is not a brand specific thing, but people typically know who he is. And that he and his daughters have a show called Buying Beverly Hills. I've coached and trained that team on this material. And I've actually been in LA filming for their second season. Now, honestly, I don't really feel like I'm kind of LA material, even though I'm from there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get cut, even though the stuff we did that day was pretty awesome. But nevertheless, this stuff works at all price points in all markets with all people because it's based on human beings. And when you're working with people as a trusted advisor, you're working with elves. They're collaborative. They're usually happy to pay your fee. They're choosing to work with, with you. I don't do listing presentations ever. Now, I know how to do them. I don't do them anymore. I don't need to. Because when I establish myself as a trusted advisor, none of the details are that important to make a decision. They want to know, do I know what I'm doing? And do they feel safe? And can they trust me? So we talked about setting your own standards, becoming a trusted advisor. And then the last piece is putting up guardrails. And if you don't do this piece, the other two will never happen. All right, in the chat, What's the point of having guardrails? Why do we have guardrails in life? You've all, most of you have a license because you're realtors. 
limits. Yeah. What else? For protection. Yeah. Safety. Yeah. All of those things. So you don't go off the cliff. That's why we have guardrails. Yeah. Boundaries. All of those things. In real estate, you got to have guardrails. And this is the stuff that no one wants to talk about. This is the most important piece, but the least exciting. Everyone wants to learn. Oh, I want to learn how to be a trusted advisor. I want to learn how to talk to people that way. Great. But if you don't do this part, it doesn't matter. Don't get into a mess. I love that. So you need to have a process for having clients, not generating leads. And if you don't believe me, let's go back. I'm not going to go back to the slide, but the slide where you have the database of 200 people, right? Do you want a list of 200 clients who know I can trust you as a realtor? Or do you want a list of leads? The database all day. So this is not about finding leads. It's about finding clients. It's about finding who, people who would use you in a real estate transaction. So you have to have a process for talking to people. Mine was the doors. Mine was the doors because it was the simplest. And I didn't want to do any of the other stuff that realtors do to talk to people because I'm antisocial. So I did it at the doors. You all have to do it somewhere and you all are different. There's 50 of you. I don't know. And you're all different ages, different sizes, different colors, different life skills. But you have to talk to people, aka developing and nurturing relationships. Second thing is you have to have a bulletproof schedule. And I love, you know, I really like the first sentence. A schedule defends against chaos and whim. Real estate is chaotic and realtors, i.e. you, are whimsical, right? <laughs> Isn't that true? So you got to have a schedule. And different things, giving food preference, that's hilarious. Um, so this was my schedule for 16 years and in a sense still is. What's the blue time? In the in the chat, what is the blue time? Make sure you're paying attention. Off, thank you, Zara. If you call me on Sunday, not going to get me. Call me at 7 a.m., not going to get me. Yes, it's my free time. I'm off. My phone is off. I'm not answering messages. I'm not looking at my email. I'm not looking at anything to do with real estate. It's totally off. I'm not on social media anyway, but if I was, I for sure wouldn't be on it in my blue time. The only thing I scheduled Monday through Friday was door knocking from 11 to 2. Then there was a break. Then I did appointments from 3 to 5. This is the most important slide of the entire 90 minutes. And everyone wants to skim right past it. Because if you don't have a schedule, your life is always chaotic. Period. And so if you can't get your schedule this simple, and I don't mean the doors. The challenge is you don't, you don't, yeah, day to day is horrible. It's horrible. And you've got to have a schedule. So if it's not going to be the doors, you're going to have other things working your CRM, working your sphere of influence. But your database leaks, right? People move away. People, people get, you know, your clients get real estate licenses. So you always have to have something scheduled on how you get more, how you find more people. So yours is going to look different. You're going to have to have time to work in your database, time to find more people to be in your database. If you're going to do open house, and if you want to do open house on Sunday, great. Take Saturday off. You could door knock still, right? Yes, I have a separate work phone. I actually have two phones. I could do it on one phone, but it's so much easier. I have two phones. This is my work phone. This is my personal phone. When I'm not working, it gets put away and I don't see anything work related. And it's bliss. And makes my life happy. And I can recharge and I don't have, you know, I can just take some time to just be present. Yeah, great, Layla. So you have to have a schedule. And, you know, in the interest of time and given our format, you know, here's the, re why won't this work for you? The first reason is you don't have it that clear what, what it is that, what is your, the first thing, what is your process for talking to people? So you have to get that squared away before you put it on the on your schedule. And then the second thing is you have to have a spot where you do appointments and you have to stick to it. You like to hear how it goes at the doors. All right, we'll get to that in a second. So Zara, you're going to volunteer uh, 
Did you get that, Mary Angie? When we get to the, what do I say at the doors we're going to use Zara since she brought up the question? Okay. Um, so if you want to get her ready while I finish this part, that'd be awesome. The appointments. Someone calls you and they say, oh, I'd like to go see that house um, tomorrow at noon. And I'd say, great, Peter, we can absolutely see that house. I can't do noon. How about three? And 80% of the time, they're going to say yes. And the few times they say no, they're like, oh, I can't do three. How about 430? Oh, can you do five? Sure, I'll do five. Okay, I know where I'm putting people and most of the time it works out. Have I ever made exceptions? Yes, but there are exceptions, like exceptions, like not very often. Almost all my appointments are in the afternoon or on a Saturday after 12 p.m. So you have to be clear. If you aren't clear on what your schedule is, then you'll always just do what your clients ask of you. And this whole nonsense about, well, my clients work. No, they don't. I mean, they do. They're not going to the dentist at 8 p.m. They're not calling their accountant at 8 p.m. When it's important to them, they will make it work. So are you a professional or are you just selling houses? You've got to answer that question honestly. And I'm not judging you. I'm just pointing it out. I have a transaction coordinator, but really, I. Yes, it helps a little. Having you use your database. I'm just going to say a very quick story about Ray. Ray called me. I've known Ray a long time. Ray called me uh, maybe not quite a year ago. It's not really his name and that's not really him. But he, Ray is 76 years old and he called me and he said, Stephen, you know, I can't door knock anymore because my hips are bad. I can't do open house because, you know, it hurts my hips. The farm I used to work, you know, it was all turned over. Nobody knows me anymore. And I still need to sell houses. You know, I support my grandkids and blah, blah, you know, some other life stuff. I said, Ray, you've been a realtor for 40 years, man. 40 years. Where are all your past clients? Just dead silence. Like, I just didn't do a good job. I'm staying in touch. Are you kidding me? That's not what I said to him. But are you kidding me? 40 years? Nothing. Nothing. 40 years of chasing. 40 years of hustling. And that is what happens when you don't have a database. You've got to have a process. You've got to have a schedule. And you got to have a place to put people. Next, you got, and lastly, you got to have accountability. And I'm not going to talk a lot about accountability it's not a bad word. It's the actually it's the opportunity to live a choice rather than by accident. Right. When I go back, if I go back to my schedule, I have a lot of freedom because I do what's most important and then I'm done. When you don't have that, you're always worrying. You have you are never free. It's the exact opposite. So without digging into that, I'll just say um you gotta have accountability. Somehow you hire a coach, you're on a team. Get a partner. So I'm going to get to you in one second, Zara. But while I deal with Zara, I want everyone to look at this. I'm going to leave this up for a minute. If we were in person, I would hand this card out. And it would capture everything we've talked about so far over the last hour. And so you don't have this card, but you can do it on a piece of paper. So don't do it in the chat. Don't do it in the chat. Do it... Um, do it on a piece of paper. And this is for you. I really just, you know, this, see if this makes any difference for you. So, you know, decide what are you worth per hour? When are you going to start your day? And when are you going to end your day? What day are you going to take off? And are you going to not look at phone messages and have the freedom to be off with your family and friends? And then if that's not good enough for you, I've kind of grayed out. But if you want to calculate the hours you work per week, and the weeks you work and calculate your total hours, you can back into your net income. But I want you to start with, what do you believe you're worth as a realtor? All right, so I invite you to do that exercise because this is the whole point. This is an awesome life. All right, Zara, so we're going to do questions. I'll leave this up, but I would normally just skip to questions or biggest challenges. So I'm going to do Q&A, but I'm going to leave this up so people, if they want to write this down, they can. All right, Zara, let's unmute you. Tell me what your question is.
You're not unmuted yet. Let's get there. You go. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I was talking. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for um, choosing me. I'm not sure why, but I'm here. <laughs> your, so, your question was something about like what happens at the door. Yes. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I've never knocked on a door. So I will be very interested to seek for any advice on how to motivate myself to go and knock doors and what to say when you're yeah. knocking and someone is opening that you don't know. It's like cold calling, right? It is like cold calling, but it's better because you're in person and you're a face. So, all right. So yeah. here's what we're going to do. We're going to do, you're going to be a homeowner. I'm going to knock on your door. Okay. okay. <laughs> I invite you not to be a jerk because then the, I'll be done in like 10 <laughs> seconds and that, that won't you know, be kind of nice. Okay. And um, to answer your whole question would take another hour. We don't have another hour, but Mary Angie's recording this. So you can go back and listen to this whole thing again, and you can listen to this interaction specifically. And if you okay. listen to it multiple times, you're going to hear different things. I'll explain some of them after, um, but it'll give you a better sense of who you have to be at the door to do it successfully. And some of you okay. asked this question. So I think this doesn't, I think this answer is not just your question, but several others. So we're going to, so we're going to, we're going to do it. All right. Okay. I need a drink of water because I've been talking too much. All right. You ready? Yes. All right. Knock, knock, knock. Hi. Hi, it's Stephen, the realtor. You seem busy. Hi, Is now a bad time? Um, well, I was trying to make some lunch for my family, but that's okay. I have a few minutes. What, what I, can I do what, for you? What I have to say will take less than two minutes. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. So you probably have um, no real estate plans this year. No, not really. And if you have no real estate plans, you're probably not paying too much attention to the market? No, no. Okay. So now you're like, ah, oh, what is this crazy realtor doing on my doorstep? Yes. <laughs> well, my name's Steven and I'm I'm the local realtor. I come by a couple of times a year with the market update. Would you mind if I handed it to you? No, go ahead. So I handed, yeah. handed you the market update. Awesome. So I know you're not moving. Uh, just curious how long you've been here. Oh, for the last year and a half. Year and a half. Great. And uh, where'd you live before? Um, I was leasing. Uh, in this part of town or somewhere else? Yeah, and Katie. Okay. And what made you pick what made you pick this house? Uh well, um the upgrade, better area, uh time to buy, I guess. Okay. So it sounds like this is like this was like the house you're gonna plant your feet in and you'll be here at least another 30 years. Probably five. Probably five. Yes. What's happening in five? Maybe I'll get married. Maybe I'll adopt some children, more dogs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? This will be too small? Probably. Yes. Probably? Yes. Okay. And where would you go then? Uh, to a four or five bedroom pool in the backyard. I don't know. In the, in Bigger the, and better, just like in Texas. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, great. So, well, I'm Stephen. You are? Zaira. Z I'm never going to pronounce that. I'm Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> uh, it's so great to meet you. Anything you need before I go? No, no. Thank you for awesome. stopping by. See you next time. Have a great day. You too. Thank Bye. you. So stay, you know, <laughs> stay with me, Zara. Okay. Okay. So a couple things for everyone. Um let me just answer uh, Diane's question. No, the market, I mean, the market update, you don't have to give an update, but if you're going to knock on someone's door, it is helpful, not required to have something. But like for me, in the end, I worked at neighborhood. And so it was just helpful to give something. And by the way, the market update is just, is essentially public record, right? They can go on Zillow or any website and get that information. I've just consolidated and made it easy for them to read. What do people want to know? They just want to know what their neighbor's house sold for. That's it. Anyways, so I started with with you. I just said, hey, um, uh, um, my name's Steven. I don't go to my last name. I don't go to my brokerage. I just say I'm the local realtor or a local realtor because they're not going to remember your firm anyway. And they're not going to remember your last name. 
and focusing on your first name makes it just about you. It's just another human being. Oh, it's just Stephen. Oh, it's just Zara. And then I and then I get permission. I say it sounds seems like you're busy is now a bad time. Now, if someone if you were being rude and a jerk, I would have still said the same thing. What I have to say will take less than two minutes. And you're either going to say, nope, I don't have time. Or you're going to say yes. And then now I have permission to speak. You've given me permission. You've given me two minutes. I'm going to be done in a minute or less. And then if it goes longer, I'm going to re-ask permission. I know we only said two minutes. Is it okay to continue? So uh, that's the first thing. I'm asking no oriented questions. What's obvious? What's obvious is that the odds are super low they're moving. So I just say, you probably have no real estate plans this year. They're like, yeah. And if you don't have any real estate plans, you're not paying much attention to the market. Yeah. And so now then I make kind of a joke. Sometimes they laugh. Sometimes they don't. You know, what is this crazy realtor doing on my doorstep? And then I drop off the market update. And now they can relax. We've already established they're not moving. I've given them something of value. And then I just say, hey, how long you been here? And they're either going to talk to me and it's going to go really great. Or they're going to be like, no, I'm done. And then you say, hey, great. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. And in the end, I'm just building relationships. Right. I got to know these people and then no different than anyone else in my database. So whether I leave a business card, you know, my info is on the market update. I don't leave a separate business card and we could go into a million details for like an hour on all the other stuff. But the point I want to make is you've got to go if it's for you. Great. Because you can take this conversation. If I go to a networking event, I'm having the same conversation. Hey, hey, I'm Stephen. You are. Sarah, then you guys say who you are. Saira. Saira. And I say the same stupid thing. I'm never going to be able to pronounce that. Help me. And you say, ah, oh, you can just call me Zara. All right, Sarah. You can just yeah. call me Sarah. Yeah. And then I say, hey, you know, where did you, uh, where did you drive from today? I drove from Houston. Houston. Awesome. Is that where you live or is that where you work? Uh, live and work. Live and work. Awesome. How, you know, and then boom, I'm having a real estate conversation. How long you been there? Where'd you live before? <laughs> you get that? Yes. Right. And because I've done this so I've done it a million times, so not a million. It feels like a million. You wake me up at 3 a.m. I can have this conversation and it feels natural and safe and all of it. Oh, OK, so um, and for the books, I don't know how Mary Angie is going to handle it. You may have to actually swing by the board to pick it up, but I won't speak for that. Um, but I will send them to Mary Angie. Um, Awesome. So thank you, Zara. Everyone gives Zara a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. I guess I'm going to try it. All right, <laughs> I've never good. done it. <laughs> All right, good. All right, Marianne, any other burning questions um, before we wrap up that you've noticed? Uh, you there is someone that asks if you keep um, track the number of doors and contacts. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I do. It's not really, you just need to keep track of how many people you talk to every day. And how about Stephen? You gave me an idea. Um, yeah. If I go to Realist or to um, Ignite, whatever they, whatever the search engine you look for, and then you can gain access to information like the buyers or the people who live in the house have been yeah. there for the last ten years. I, let's say I, I can I go knock on their homes. I don't yeah. recommend that. No, because it's too time consuming. It's too confusing. You're going to be out on the street trying to match your data to the door. And okay. yes, there's apps that make it easier, but it ruins the process of discovery. Mm, okay. <laughs> it ruins the process of discovery because you never know. You never know what's behind the door. You never know. Just that renter could have just gotten notice from their landlord that they're selling the home in three months. And, and while you may not get that listing, that, that that renter needs to buy a house. And so you can't you can't go off it it kills your curiosity and your you. key strength that that you have to develop is your curiosity, how to be curious. And the factor of surprising or surprise will be I guess the one who will put you to talk to people too. Yeah. You don't know who they know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, so I talked about keeping track. Um, let's see, what else was in there? You know, how many people do I speak to? I mean, uh, on average, I would talk, I would get to about 30 to 33 doors an hour and, you know, 20 to 23% of the people would open the door. 
more people were home, but that's who would open the door. Um, yeah, awesome. Any other questions before I go to uh, wrap up? Going once, going twice. Um, obviously, I recommend my book. The second book I would recommend would be The Full Fee Agent, which I showed before um, by Chris Foss and Steve Shul. I'll put that in there. Um, that would be, and then, you know, I have a whole list of books. You can, I'm going to put my email and my calendar back on. People can follow up with me if, uh, if you have any other questions. So let me go back in. I'll wrap this all up. All right. This is the context you probably walked in with, right? It's the hard and unfilling way to do real estate. I call it the grip of the industry, right? Our identity is based on a production. Something's better than nothing. And we have to be available 24 by seven. And I hopefully have convinces the, hopefully I've shown you a way that that's super unproductive if you want to have boundless opportunity and freedom. And that if you do, your pathways out are set your own standards in terms of who, how you're going to work and who you're going to work with. Develop yourself as a trusted advisor. Stop trying to outvalue. You'll never outvalue the other 49,999 realtors. We all do the same thing. It's how we do it. And lastly, put up guardrails. If you put up guardrails, it keeps you from falling off the cliff. So again, if I we were in person, I would have, you would have this card and you'd be filling it out and turning it into me, which you're not going to be able to do. But I am curious if you can put it in the chat. So you came in with one thing and now you're leaving. What is it that you're leaving with that you're like, ah, oh, the thing I could benefit the most if I got some help with what? You know, we talked about a lot. We talked about, you know, setting, you know, calculating your dollar per hour, setting your standards, setting your hours, setting up your process, setting up your schedule. So yeah, great. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, who that was? Curse and great. That's great. Being true to yourself, your calendar. Awesome. What are you leaving with? What do you think you need most help? What's the thing you need to work with? Yeah, great. Time blocking your calendar. Perfect. A separate phone. I love it. Awesome. Great. Love it. Awesome. Hey, you guys were listening. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So does anyone mind if I ask you a question? I know it's rhetorical. Is there anything unclear about going from where you are to where you want to be in terms of the process we outlined? I think the answer is no, right? There's nothing. Everyone gets it. It's pretty straightforward. The challenge is what? Doing it. And how are you going to keep it so that with so many distractions coming at you? I mean, that's the challenge, right? Here on this call, this seems so simple, right? It's so simple, but doing it is so much harder. And, um, you know, I find people to do that with. Find people to do that with. So if there's, you know, take a screenshot of this screen. If there's anything unclear or anything you have a question about, or you're like, oh, I need help figuring out my schedule. I need help with something else that we didn't cover. Take a picture. You go to my calendar. I'm happy to do, um, you know, it's a short call and I'm happy to help you because I can't help everyone one-on-one -on, -one on this call. And I invite you to do that soon. Like tomorrow I'm going to be in Milwaukee. Most of my days blocked out, but I still have time on Thursday and Friday. Do it before the, before Thanksgiving while this is still fresh in your head. So take a picture, go to my calendar, book a time. If you have a quick question, you just want to send me an email or text, that's fine too. Everyone got this? I'm going to skip ahead. All right. So this, right, this is what I was talking about today. This is an awesome business in life. And you've got to create accountability. The other thing about accountability, accountability supports your promise rather than your mood. Thousands of times I had to get in my car and get drive into a neighborhood and get out of the car and start knocking. And you know what? Peter, Derek, Dina, Diane, Layla, Zara, Adrian, Brooke. Never, ever. I never, ever, ever, never, ever felt like it. 
Never. I never woke up and said, woohoo, I get to go to the doors today. Never. I never felt like that. Never, ever. Never. What I ne- what I never felt like door knocking, but I love the feeling of having knocked. So when you create accountability, it supports your promises rather than your moods. Your feelings and your moods are unreliable. So if you are committed to implementing any of the stuff we talked about, it, you're never going to feel like doing half of it. You've got to create accountability or you're going to go off the cliff. Worse, you go off the cliff and then you climb back up and then you do it all and you get some momentum and then you fall back off again. So I invite you to find accountability. And when you do that, you transform, right? You have a higher quality of life and more capacity, more financial capacity to use it. So, oh yeah, those kids. Good news, I didn't kill them. They actually turned out quite nice. They're all responsible young adults. And this is not about me and my kids. This is my point. And if you don't have kids or you don't like kids or your kids are grown, again, not the point. You just get with the example. That's my, the middle one there is my son, Evan. He graduated college in May. And when I was there, what I was absolutely present to was that I got to raise the, I got into real estate to raise these kids. Not to be number one, not to make a million. I mean, I made money, but it wasn't to make a million dollars. It was to raise these kids. And I got to take them to every baseball practice. I took them to religious school. My daughter was a dancer. And I, every day for years, I'd take her to her bus, take her to her dance studio. Like I got, I got to be a part of all of that and still have a great business. And the point is all of everything we talked about lets you have a life outside of your business. And if you don't have a family or your family's grown, there's something else that's important in your life. I'm asserting. So all of this works for you and your life. I really appreciate everyone being here. Here's my info again. If you want to schedule time on my calendar, you just want to send me a quick note, you're more than welcome to do that. I will get the books to Mary Angie probably. It'll probably take a couple of weeks because I, the way they get ordered, it probably won't be there till after the Thanksgiving. But we'll let Mary Angie figure, you'll have a list and you'll figure out how they get their books. And that's all I got for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you so much. This was great. I see all the comments in the chat and everybody's raving about this webinar. So we really, truly appreciate you being here. As uh, so for the books, I do have a list. I will be emailing you if you got a book. I would just uh, let you know right now that to be very patient with us. Like Stephen mentioned, we probably will get these books after Thanksgiving. And then I will let you know when they're here so you can come pick them up at HAR Central. And before everybody heads out and leaves, let me just tell you that we have a few webinars coming up. Um, if you like this one, you're gonna love the ones coming up. We have one tomorrow, uh, given that it was better on day just a few days ago. We are going to do a webinar all about VA loans and what that looks like in Texas and in the Houston area. It's going to be a panelist of experts. So if you would like to join us for that, I will put the link on the chat. And also on November 20th, right before Thanksgiving, we would like to offer you an A. I webinar talking about how you can use AR to market yourself in the real estate industry. I'll put both of those links in the chat for you. And we will give you the recording for this specific webinar, right? Um, tomorrow, between tomorrow and the day after. So just be in the lookout for that in your emails. And Steven, anything else you would like to say? Just, I really appreciate. It's so easy for people to check out on the webinar. And I could tell through the chat that people were paying attention and participating. And I, I really do appreciate that because I can't see you. You can see me. I'm just imagining you there. And um, it really does make a difference. So at least for me, I just want to say thank you for your participation and your listening today. Perfect. Thank you. And I will hope to see everyone either tomorrow or next Monday for our next webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.